What's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Side Swipes the Boss, back at it again with another tier list. And we are back on the live action Marvel side of things. But we have moved back to the TV shows with today's episode being about Daredevil. And I want to contribute my services in the Save Daredevil petition. Save Daredevil because it shouldn't have been canceled. Just because all the others were bad doesn't mean it needed to be canceled. But anyway, that's besides the point. Today we are doing the main characters for Daredevil and a few side characters that I think are important. And before we start, just a reminder just to hit that like button and to subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're close to 1,000 subscribers. We just hit 600, so we're 60% we're there. Uh, the support would be really appreciated. So first up, we have Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil himself. And you already know he's going in the S tier. He's the best character of the show. He's the namesake of the show, for crying out loud. But yeah, he's cool. He's a cool character. You know, he has the best storylines. Charlie Cox is a perfect perfect casting for daredevil he just he plays a blind man so well but being able to like show emotion and stuff like that it, it's just not many actors could do that but he was the perfect casting for the role the suit's awesome he has some great fight scenes amazing fight scenes actually and he, he's just a great character overall so definitely definitely the top of the s tier for daredevil next up we have karen page and Karen was, Karen was kind of irritating, not even going to lie. She got into a lot of situations that she shouldn't have got into just to get a story or something like that. Even in like season one, wasn't she the one who didn't want to go outside for a while because she got attacked? Then in like later in the season, she just started acting crazy and stuff like that. She killed Wesley. She's. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, Karen's just a weird character to me. She's not terrible, but she's definitely not my favorite, so she's going to go in the, I'll put her in the C tier, but I doubt she's going to end up at the top of it. Next up, we have Stick, and Stick was a pretty funny character, not even going to lie. He was like an old douchebag. <laughs> it was funny. And he was pretty cool with the fight scenes as well. He played an ally and an antagonist to Matt sometimes as well. It was kind of weird, but it still worked for some storylines at least. So he's also going to go in the C tier, but above Karen. Next up, we have Elektra. And Elektra was cool for when she was in the show. I'm not going to include her time in the Defenders. But just in like season two of Daredevil, she was a cool character. She has some cool fight scenes. I actually liked her and Matt's romance more than Karen and uh, Matt's romance. That's not really saying much because, I mean, it wasn't too, too much better than it. But it was still better than it regardless. But she was a cool character. She has some cool fight scenes, cool emotion as well. So she's going to go in the B tier. Next up, we have Ray Nadim. I think that's what his name was. He was like the FBI, one of the main FBI people in season three. And he had a pretty cool storyline. He definitely had a great motivation, you know, doing everything for his family and stuff. And I'm glad he kind of like turned a leaf at the end and finally decided to like help Daredevil and stuff. Even though he did die, which was kind of sad, not even going to lie. But he was still a cool character nonetheless. So he's also going to go in the B tier. But below Electra. Next up we have the kingpin himself. Wilson Fisk. And you already know he's going in the S tier. Just below Daredevil. He's an amazing, amazing, amazing character. Him and Matt's rivalry is like one of the best I've ever seen. The actors play off each other very well. He has a great motivation. A great backstory. He has some cool fight scenes, even though he's just using like his brute strength to do it. I definitely give him more intelligence points, though, than fighting points because, man, his intelligence is through the roof. He be tearing Matt and the city apart from the inside out, and it's, it's just awesome. So definitely S-tier material for Wilson Fisk. Next up, we have Father Lampton or Lanton. 
I think that's what his name was. It started with an L, one of the one of the two. And he was an alright character. I mean, he honestly didn't really do much except, you know, give Matt advice. And he died in season three out of nowhere. I guess it was kind of a good motivation for Matt, but still, I guess he served his purpose. But I'll just put him in the D tier because he didn't really do too much. Next up, we got Anatoly. He was like the brother of Vladimir in like season one before he like died a gruesome death. (laughs) He died a very gruesome death, but he didn't really do too much either. Vladimir did more than him, but he was just there, to be honest. So he's also going to go in the D tier, but below Father Link, Lampton or Link, whatever his name is. Next up, we have Vanessa. And Vanessa, she was just of Wilson's love interest. Also didn't really do too much in the show either. But it she did serve as a very good motivation for Wilson Fisk. So I'll, I'll give her credit there. So she'll go at the bottom of the C tier. Next up, we have Ben Yurick. And he was a all right character, you know. He was the reporter back in season one, helping Karen out. And he was, like I said, he's a pretty cool character. He had a decent motivation, you know, trying to stay alive and help his wife and stuff like that. And it was sad when he died at the end of season one. But he's just a cool character nonetheless. So he's going to go at the top of this. You know what? I'll put him at the bottom of the B tier. I'll give him a little bit more credit. Next up, we have the other Ben of Daredevil, Benjamin Poindexter, a.k.a. Dex, a.k.a. Bullseye. And he's the FBI agent who Wilson Fisk manipulated, you know, with all that trauma in his past with stuff like that. Then he became a villain and worked with Wilson Fisk until he wanted to kill him, which kind of came a little bit out of nowhere. But it kind of also made sense since he was getting manipulated regardless. But he was still a cool character nonetheless. I mean, he had some awesome fight scenes, even though most of the time he just threw stuff. But that's his thing. So I give him credit for that. But he was a cool character nonetheless and i'm really sad we won't get to see him no more especially with the tease at the very end of season three where i think he was like getting surgery on his spine and his eyes open which means he's still alive i hope that comes like i hope that bring i hope that like i don't know how to say i hope he comes back i'll just say i hope he comes back so he's gonna go in the a tier Next up, we have Foggy Nelson, and he was a pretty decent character. I really liked him in season three, you know, taking the initiative, trying to become the new DA, you know, trying to not be corrupt like all the other DAs were before him and stuff like that. And him and Matt's friendship is probably one of the best things about the show, you know, their bond, how it's like torn and, you know, goes through a lot, especially when he finds out that Matt's daredevil. And stuff like that. You got to give credit to both actors for really playing that well. And he's a cool character nonetheless as well. So he's also going to go in the A tier. But below Bullseye. Next up we got the homie Wesley. And Wesley is a personal favorite of mine. I was so sad when he died in season 1. He should have lasted at least until the end of the show. Because he was... He was an awesome character. He didn't have any fight scenes or anything, but he was so he was so smug, so cool with all his actions and stuff like that. And you know, he did anything Fist asked him to do. That's a true that's true loyalty right there. And I give him credit for that. So he's also gonna go in the A tier. But at the bottom of the A tier. Cause he he I would have put him higher if He was in the show for any longer than he was. Next up, we got Vladimir. Like I said earlier, he's the other Russian brother, you know. And he did a lot more than uh, Anatoly did. He was a cool character, you know. He had that episode where he and Matt were, you know, trying to escape Fisk together. Then he kind of sacrificed himself, which is cool. So, he was a decent character. Definitely better than his brother, though. So, he's going to go... In like the mid C tier above Karen. Next up we have Madam Gao. And I'm only including like her appearances in season one and season two. Not in the Defenders. 
but she was a cool character, you know, always showing up with the bad guy wisdom. <laughs> and, you know, she she kind of surprised me when she could fight. I didn't expect that at all. She was a decent character nonetheless. So she's going to go mm, put her in the C tier also above Karen. Next up, we have Mahoney. And yeah, Mahoney, you know, he's, he's like the connective glue of all the shows, to be honest. He shows up in every single show. But just counting his Daredevil time, he's a cool character, you know, helping out Foggy and Matt on the legal side and also sometimes helping out Daredevil on the not legal side of things. But he's still a cool character nonetheless. I'm glad he survived as long as he did. So he's going to go at the bottom of the B tier. Next up, we have Melvin. And Melvin, he didn't really show up too much in the show. He showed up like a couple times each season. And, you know, he was, you know, providing Daredevil with the costumes and gadgets and stuff until he kind of betrayed him in, in season three. Even though it wasn't really a big betrayal, it was just, you know, trying to protect Betsy or Bessie or whoever he was trying to protect but he was still a cool character nonetheless and the gadgets he made they were awesome so and the suit as well so he's gonna go at also the mid C tier but just below Madame Gal so again <laughs> above Karen next up we have Nobu and Nobu honestly to me he overstayed his welcome I mean he wasn't really as awesome as a character in season two as he was in season one i guess it kind of does make sense though because he is a part of the hand and they would have brought him back to life so that does make sense and he has some pretty awesome fight scenes not even gonna lie so maybe he didn't overstay his welcome so he's gonna go in the c tier but above melvin so just below madame gal Next up, we have Leland. He was like, you know, the accountant or like the person who like handled all the money of that little villain group in season one. And he was just, he just complained a lot. He didn't really do too much. He tried killing Vanessa. I'll say that. That was surprising. Not even gonna lie. Then all he did was just get like pushed off a cliff. Not a cliff. Uh, um, Into like an elevator shaft or something by Wilson. He's a, he's gonna go in the F tier. He he wasn't really a favorite character of mine. Next up we have Frank Castle, aka the Punisher, and I am only including his time in Daredevil season two in this tier list. And he was still an awesome character regardless. Um, John Benthral, I think that's how you say his name. He's a perfect perfect casting for the role. He has some awesome fight scenes. We learn a little bit about his motivation, even though it's. Just flushed out more in his own show still we learned a little bit about his motivation and it's pretty cool like i said he has some cool fight scenes he shows some cool emotion as well and you know it was cool and like showed up at the end and stuff helping daredevil at the end of season two that was cool but he's just an awesome character regardless so he's also gonna go in the s tier well i'll just put him at the top of the a tier because i'll put him in the s tier when i rank his show next up we have blake tower he was like the assistant uh district attorney before uh what's her name died uh reyes <laughs> and he's also going in, in the f tier because i did not like his character at all he was a very very dislikable character he was like he's someone you wanted to hate and they <laughs> They did that very well, so F tier for Blake Tower. I just didn't like his character at all. Next up, we have Claire. I think that's what her name was, Claire. Let me know in the comments if that was wrong, but Claire, she was just, eh, to me, like, yeah, she helped Daredevil whenever he's hurt and stuff. Then she left. I think she went over to either Luke Cage or Jessica Jones, one of the two, one of those two shows, and, you know, she she just showed up when it wasn't really too convenient. I mean, she just showed up to like help stitch Daredevil up and stuff like that. So she's gonna go 
in the mid D tier. I didn't really care for her character that much. Next up, we have Reyes, and she was like the district attorney in season two before she got knocked off by somebody. And she was also a dislikable character, but I guess like the show made it so that we disliked her because she kind of was an antagonist to Matt, Foggy, and Karen in their law firm and stuff like that. And I mean, I guess she tried coming clean at the end of season two or towards the end, but too little too late. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. So... She's also going to go in the D tier, but above Claire. Actually, you know what? No, below Claire. Next up, we have Turk. And Turk was just comedy relief for me. That's, that's really all he was in the show. He was just comedy relief. He didn't really serve the plot too much. So he's going to go at the bottom of the C tier. Next up, we have Sister Maggie. She is Matt Murdock's mom. That was kind of shocking when I first heard that back in season three. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. What? But, I mean, they did show flashbacks to why that happened. So, I guess it makes sense. And she was a pretty decent character. Also, you know, given the wisdom like uh, Father Lamp Lampton or Langton did. And, you know, she was just there to, like, help encourage Matt as well. So, she was a pretty cool character. She's going to go... I'll put her in the C tier just between Madame Gal and Nobu. And finally, you have Jack Murdoch. I'm only including him in here because he was prominent in flashbacks. So I got to give him a little bit more uh, credit. And he was a cool flashback character, you know. Like I said, he wasn't in the show too much only in flashbacks but when he did show up he did kind of you know helping like the flashback storylines you know helping to see like how matt got to this point uh also serves as one of matt's motivations so that was cool as well so he's gonna go also in the c tier but i'll put him just below maggie so that's the list, folks. F tier, we have Leland and Blake Tower. D tier, we have Father Langton or Lampton, whatever it is. Claire, Reyes, and Anatoly. C tier, we have Stick, Vladimir, Madame Gal, Sister Maggie, Jack Murdoch, Nobu, Melvin, Karen, Vanessa, and Turk. B tier, we have Electra. Nadim, Ben Yurik, and Mahoney. A tier, we have Frank Castle, Ben, Poindexter, slash Dex, slash Bullseye, Foggy, and Wesley. And in the S tier, we have Daredevil and Wilson Fisk. So that's the tier list, folks. Thank you guys for tuning in. Sorry, it was a little messier than usual. It's been a minute since I've seen this show, so I had to recall some memories. I guess I got to go watch it again for like the fifth or sixth time. But let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the tier list. Would you change it a bit? Would you change it a lot? Or would you keep it the same? Just let me know that. Also, let me know in the comment section what tier list you would like to see next. And if you did enjoy this video, just hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new and you want to see more videos like this. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.